Satan's plan has always been to destroy the lives of men and hinder them from living the life God intended. He is at work even more now, knowing that his time is over. Deliverance Moment brings you gripping testimonies of victors who, by the unstoppable power of God, have escaped Satan's firm, deadly grip and are now ready to expose his schemes and devices against the unsuspecting masses. So how do they take these uh, records? Does he have secretaries? Are they taken by demons? And what? Oh, Satan himself writes the records of the family. Um, all those things. He has demons mm. which he gave responsibilities over different uh, generations. So you find in, in, in here in our country, they call them clan spirits. That you, those are the clan spirits, what and what. But mm. the, the, those are those are spirits of, of, of your ancestors those are, those are all lies those are demons which are torturing people but and they keep them in the bondage yeah they manifest in form of your ancestors they can yeah. use their Take on your father's name yeah. i mean face your face, father who died yeah. your mother who died mm -hmm. then they come in the dreams they, and come in the dreams. they, they come. tell you did not do this so you want to do, go and do that they even possess people you find the person is talking like like you uh, like, he does things which the father used to yeah, do. Yeah, talks like someone who died long time ago. So you say, ah, that is the, the other person is spirit. You have to do. Then the spirit tells you do this and that. If you don't do this, you're going to die. You're going to suffer. Those are not spirits of the dead. Those are demons. demons. For angels, you used to see them. Angels. Angels. Uh -huh. Yeah. We welcome you once again to our studios, our viewers. We are so glad that we are back once again. Today, uh, we are going to do the thing a little bit different. Uh, we have agreed that uh, Ed ministers or shares his testimony in the language which he naturally flows. English is his second language and like uh, to, meant to all of us. But uh, we wanted this session to really flow well. So he's going to speak in his natural language, Luganda. And we are going to get an interpreter. Then he will say bye to you at the end of the session. Uh, we want to begin with a word of prayer. Then we go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much for our viewers. We thank you for the people that have been following us all along, hearing these uh, <clears throat> wonderful testimonies that you have given us. Lord, we pray that even as we share, they will be edified. We come against every spirit of fear. For the Lord God, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Bless us, O oh God, and we pray for the flow of this message that is going to be great, and it's going to edify your people, and bless them. I pray that you help Eddie to articulate the things that we need to know. We want to bless you and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, our viewers, the last time we, our, in our last session, when we were signing off, we told you we're still talking about dreams. Eddie talked about things that chase people in dreams. People dream very different things, you know, animals chasing you, and he explained that. Now, he, we also promised that he's going to talk about uh, people eating, uh, people eating in dreams. So that's what we want to talk about, sex and dreams. But uh, we have to know that uh, a dream world is a really, really important world. When you look at the Bible, God talked to Joseph, telling him how he was, what he was going to be, uh, how he's going to be over his brothers. He's going to be a ruler. And it came through a dream. And it was later fulfilled in the life of Joseph. When he went to Egypt, Pharaoh had this dream where there were seven cows and there was uh, lean cows, then uh, seven fat cows. So you see the things happening, and uh, he had to look for somebody to interpret the dream. So Joseph came and he gave this dream. He interpreted the dream, and it, came to, it happened exactly. that In that dream, you discover that God uh, communicated to Pharaoh 
a span of uh, 14 years what was going to happen, seven years of famine, uh, of plenty, and seven years of famine. That was a very, very big span. But it came in a dream. So, dreams are very, very important. You see Solomon also dreaming in, um, uh, in 1 Kings 3, 4. Solomon goes into a dream. God asks him what he wanted, and Solomon asked wisdom. It was not just a mere dream. When God was so much impressed that he gave uh, Solomon wisdom, it was not like I'm conversing with the aid right now. But it was God conversing with the man in a dream. Uh, in Numbers 12, starting from verse 6 to 8, the Bible says, To other people I speak to through dreams and visions. But to my servant Moses, I speak to him as a man speaks to a fellow man. When you go to... Um, Job, uh, I think this, uh, let me read this scripture, then uh, I will invite Eddie to share with us. Uh, in Job 33, starting from uh, Job 33, starting from uh, verse 14 to 18, uh, let's see what the scripture say. Then Eddie is going to speak to us very important things about dreams. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when, um, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from, uh, from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Can you imagine God keeping man's soul from falling into a pit? Some, uh, but it's in a dream. You can find even, um, some of you have been dreaming. You are falling in a pit. You are falling in where? Dreams are weird. People dream when they are flying. People dream when they are eating. People dream when they are having sex. So, Eddie is going to be explaining to us now. Eddie is not giving a theory. This is a world he lived in. He lived underground. He lived with the Saturn. He lived in the world of Saturn. He knows what happens underground. So, Eddie, we want to welcome you today. But as I've told our viewers, today you are going to speak in Luganda. So, we, our, our interpreter will do the job. So, I'm going to let you speak. Just explain to us everything. And uh, then I'll, I may come in later. So, please, uh, greet our, um, our audience and speak to us. Praise the Lord, brethren. Who are watching us on our youtube channel we thank the lord that you're still with us this far and we give all the glory to our lord jesus christ so today we are back to continue testifying as we unveil the lies of the devil and also saving people so you might be there having an issue you're dealing with but if you find out the root cause of your problem it quickens your deliverance. So today we are going to talk about dreams. Those that people have while eating, having intercourse with women or men in dreams, you know, things of that nature. So we are going to start with what is known as demonic foods. Here, we are referring to people who dream while eating. You, know, you dream while eating chicken, matoke. You know, pasta, there is that meal that you like the most. So you dream while eating it. So these things, when you wake up, that dream is actually reality. It's not just a dream. So when you dream while eating, that which you eat, let's say you while you dream, your friend has given you a piece of meat. But you need to know that that is not your friend that you have received it from. Those are demons. You know, I keep on telling people that the kingdom of Satan, the one known as the underworld, is built on what we call magic. And whatever is done through magic, you know, people know magicians, we watch them on TV. So how is this done for them to have you captured? Those things that you eat in a dream, they capture your soul and life for them to have you chained. But how does this happen? In that world called the underworld, they have what 
is known as demonic restaurants. These are places set aside for preparing feasts that can be used to capture someone who is in this land of the living. So they get bones of the dead in the underworld. Remember, I said it is built on magic. So they cut the bones into pieces. When I say they, I am referring to demons or ghosts. They cut the bones. They have huge saucepans. They cook these bones from. They do not light fire. These saucepans have their own technology of that place. After they have put into those saucepans, they just cover. After this, these demons allot some time for the saucepans after which, when they open, only to find different kinds of foods. But these kinds of foods they prepare are not for themselves. They do not even test it. They wait when people are sleeping. So when you are sleeping, we are told that you be at a zero level. Your soul is calm and relaxed. So your spiritual realm is actually more active when you are sleeping. So these spirits come in their real form to give you that food in a dream, you will discern that these are devils. So what do they do? Since they use Satan's powers, they put on the images of different people that you know to disguise themselves. They can disguise themselves as a friend of yours or someone that you may know. They do, not, they do that to cover on their lies and their true image. So they come in that dream. They conjure your soul and spirit and they feed you in the dream. They feed your inner man on that food. Those bones that appear as foods of different kinds. So when you wake up, after you are eating those things in a dream, you will not understand what happened. Add just a little bit. These demons get dead bones, dry bones of human beings. And it is these dry bones which turn into chicken, um, meat, any other food. But it put only dead bones. And of course we know that there are bones all over the place. Okay? So, go ahead. After they feed you, they are putting you in bondage. It's not that they are helping you to eat. Not for you to get satisfied. So that is what is called magic. That a magician can get a stick and change it into anything. So those demons use magic and they get those bones and they transform them into different kinds of food. But in reality, it is just witchcraft that you are fed on. So if you wake up from the dream and you do not pray to break that, many people do not. You might be there not knowing the implication of this and so you carry on with your life. But after a while, this thing will be manifested in your, in your life. Out of the blue, people start to get different kinds of diseases. One gets cancer. One who used to fast very much starts to reduce. One who liked fasting no longer uh, wants to fast. Simply because he was fed. He was brought into contact with the vile things of the devil. Uh, I don't know how to say this. But uh, they are giving you food. Uh, in food, when we eat food, is supposed to nourish our body. But because the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This food that he gives us, demons give us in dreams, they are not to nourish our bodies, but they are supposed to poison our bodies. So that's why people get different kind of sicknesses, like cancer, uh, those uh, incurable diseases, or some of them which are them, but uh, you have spent a lot of money on them. But something began in a dream. So when we, we wake up, we need to really pray about that.
Wow, that is a serious... You see the things, first of all. I mean, you used to see the things happen. Yes. We were there in the training. When they trained us on how we are going to do our work, for those who have been following this program, Satan had fed me a lie that he is God, and that is the reason why he persecutes people. This is because he wants them to go back to him. He believes that when he torments someone, that person will come back running to him because he is God. So, how do I go to him? so since most people do not know God, the creator of heaven and earth, so when they fall sick or encounter a hard situation, they run to a shrine. They run to false prophets who do gimmicking, you know. That's where the devil ensnares them and takes them deeper into bondage. Okay. They don't go to Satan, they go to his servants, the witch doctors. And they think witch doctors are helping them, while witch doctors are simply putting them into more bondage and taking them deeper into Satan. So into bondage. And also these false prophets. So that's how he traps people. That is very interesting. Yes. That's how the devil does it. The devil has nothing good that he gives to man and has never liked a creature called a human being. So there are dreams like that. If you dream while eating and many different things, all those, if you see them in a dream, just wake up and pray against. We're going to talk about something different that still relates to dreams. We are going to talk about dreaming while having intercourse. Yes, yes, yes. That is something very important. We receive many people who get, uh, who get dreams when they are having sex. Some uh, have, uh, are having sex with their relatives, their husbands, people they know. Others with the people whom they don't know. That is an area where you need really to explain to our audience. Please. Uh -huh. So you who is watching us, when you dream while having sex with a woman or a man, you may dream while having sex with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That is not your girlfriend whom you have intercourse with in your dream. Those are demons that we call spiritual wives and spiritual husbands. So pastor, people will get these dreams and for them, they will not w wake up and pray. They'll see it as something normal. Some people even say, I think now this is my wife. Yeah. But you know, these are all lies of the devil. So you see, they had married me off to a spirit called Jezebel. You were married to a spirit called Jezebel. So Jezebel was my wife. Yes, you told me that in one of the sessions. So why did they show me these things? It is because I was operating in the evil anointing of sexual immorality among the youth. That is where I learned all these things about intercourse in dreams. I told you earlier that the devil does something that we call spiritual marriages. That is joining you with another partner in the spiritual realm. The devil strives at seeing its kingdom coming here to commune with the people on earth. And so he commands his demons to come and establish that relationship with human beings, but not in good faith. They just want to take you into bondage. So when you dream while having intercourse with your friend, that's just a demon. You bind it. It is a demon disguising your friend's image. Demons don't come in, uh, if a demon came like a snake or some weird being, you would be scared. So it has to put on a human picture. So it can put on your father's picture, it can put on your mother's, or your girlfriend or something. So when you are having sex in a dream, you are just simply, you think you are having sex with some friend of yours, but it is an evil spirit having a... Okay, yes, go ahead. So when you dream, when you are having intercourse with that spirit, in real life, when you have intercourse with a woman, that woman conceives and later gives birth. So similarly, in the spiritual world, 
when a demon sleeps with you, you conceive a spiritual pregnancy. And you ought to give birth to children of demons. So some people will dream that when they are having sex with one person, so after a while, you dream when you are now having kids that you don't understand where they came from. You know, the children are crying and you're parenting them. Like you're in such a miserable life. So the pregnancy you get is not the physical pregnancy where you're going to give, a, uh, you're going to give birth to a normal child like any human being, but it has to be in the spiritual realm. You may not even realize it. Okay? Yes. Now, after you have given birth to children of demons in the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. the, the other bad thing about this is that after you have had this intercourse with this demon, you have established a relationship, meaning you're not supposed to have any other relationship in uh, the physical realm. So it's like when I get married, I don't, uh, I don't allow my wife to any man to just come and take my wife. I have uh, that jealous. I have to keep her, and also the woman who is married to a man does not allow. My wife cannot allow just any woman to come and be and sleep with me or have any relationship with me. So it, it's like that. So okay, I see many young people are suffering, struggling to get married to get. And when you try to investigate, some of them, they have constant dreams when they are having sex. So this really makes a lot of sense. Yes, continue to explain that. If you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you're in wedding preparation, this demon that you had intercourse with in a dream comes in to fight this relationship that you have because it has jealousy uh, against your partner that, uh, that you may not get into the marriage covenant. To some, they may get a girlfriend and just break up after a week. They break up and they keep breaking up from one person to the other. And that's a constant pattern in your life. I don't know whether I have shared this on, uh, I've shared this, on uh, this channel. But there's this girl who came to me. She rang me and telling, her, telling me how they had the boyfriend. Had they had a, a dream when someone was contesting over uh, contending with uh, with him about this girl, saying, "This is my girl, uh, this is my wife. You cannot marry her." And the guy said, "No, she's not. This girl is not married. She, they were planning an introduction, and they all broke out. The guy, he, this guy was so huge, he beat up this young man and threw him in the road, and the speeding car came and crushed him. So the guy woke up when he actually crushed him to death. Then he woke up and he rang this girl, explained it." the dream, then the girl rang me. So I told her that is a very bad dream. Pray for this guy. But I think she did not pray. Later they rang her. After some hours, the guy was going to town. He was knocked down and he died. They took him to Mlago and you know, to a hospital and he died. So these things are real. I've seen people like that. Uh, yes, I think what you are talking really makes sense. I can understand that. So all these things happen because there is an evil spirit fighting against you in life. And another terrible thing, it doesn't just stop at hindering you from getting married, but it also fights other aspects of your life. It's not that you are having a husband to see you develop. This demon is there to see you retrograde. You don't progress in life. It makes sure you are poor. It makes sure you are miserable. It makes sure you, you know, it ruins anything, any source of your joy. Because the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that is, it is a mission in your life. Not like, you know, when you have a husband, he wants to buy a car, he wants to live. Eh? That's what life is supposed to be. But Satan is different. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, you may find a person and they say, can you imagine they had promised me a job? But actually, you can hear that the next day they were going to get a job. But before that day, he has intercourse with that demon in the dream. And when that day comes, they are told, come back another day. Oh, no, 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 no. The devil is a liar. Yes, I've heard people telling me that. So the spirit always lurks around you for any blessing coming your way. Every time it sleeps with you in a dream, it takes away your blessing. It veers it. 
it makes your life miserable. To some ladies, it causes miscarriages in real life. Every time she gets pregnant, she gets a miscarriage and again and again. This is because every time she has intercourse with that man in the dream, the spiritual husband always ensures that you get miscarriages. It doesn't want you to have a child with the earthly man that you have got, for it exists to only destroy your life in such a way. Um, are you through with, uh, with that one, with the sex and dreams? Now, I want you to talk about these things called monitoring spirits. What do you know about monitoring spirits, you know? Yeah. So you who are watching us, what you ought to know is that there are things that operate in this world that you cannot see. I don't say this to scare you, but if you're in Jesus... All these things have no authority over you. So Jesus is the only one who can help you overcome all these things. So there are different kinds of spirits that walk on this earth, but you cannot see them with your physical eyes because they are spirits. So there is what they call monitoring spirits. These spirits the devil sends unto everyone in this planet. So these monitoring spirits... So, you know, spirits are of different yes, kinds. Yes, yes. When the devil wants to fight your life, he doesn't just rush in to do that. He patiently handles it in a careful manner. So, there are spirits that the devil sends. Let's say spying spirits. He sends them to go and spy and find out how you handle your life. So, you may have your job. You leave home at 7 a.m., but it's just monitoring all your movements. That's why you find some people saying, at times when I'm moving, I find someone, you know, walking, uh, following me. I feel as if someone is around. So that that someone is talking about is what they call a monitoring spirit. So that spirit, it's in most times that it studies your life patterns to find out how you live your life, what makes you happy. What impresses you? How is your relationship with your wife? How do you treat your children? Uh, so it's there to take records. Hey, it even records. I thought it just simply monitors and, you know, memorizes a thing in order. It is, a demon is organized to the extent that it can take notes, get a pen and a book and write. Yes, even demons have books and hey, pens. That's something new. Those things don't only stop on this planet Earth. A demon following me, following my family, and is writing down everything that is taking place in my family, in my life. I go somewhere, it is following me. So what is the purpose of that? Yes. You, explain that. you know, the devil likes taking records. He likes taking records. He likes a lot of paperwork, writing down to understand this works like this and the other. So they note down your name, your life, your upcoming prospects, you know, what are you looking at if maybe a job. And so they keep uh, writing this down, and so that's a monitoring spirit. So when it's done, it goes back to the underworld and gives a report and says, this person is like this, their children's names, this is the uh, most prospective child. So in other words, this is not just a monitoring spirit, it is a spying spirit. Yeah, I think it's a spying spirit. It has spies my life. So they take these records to the underworld, to the headquarters. Uh, in, the, in, in the underworld. So when they are done, they brief the ones that are going to come and attack you. Explain that. You know, we are talking about strange things. Everybody is, uh, uh, even myself, um, you know, it's shocking how a demon can come, take records, then it goes underground takes a record somewhere, then they send somebody, some other spirit to come. Just please try to explain that. So let me expound on this in this way. So people who have gone to shrines, let's say you went to bewitch someone. 
you are told, write down that person's name here. So you write down the name of that person that you want to be witch. And the witch says, is, is, that's all, you know, don't worry. So the witch then summons murder spirits and hands them the paper where that name has been written. So it says, this is this, this person, this is their name, go and do this and this. And they have given them that name. And so they work with the information that they have been given. And so demons work on the information they have been they given command. and commands as well. So when they get this information, they return it uh, to the underworld. You know, they are, they are structured in different levels. The way they work is different. But this power is different. The demon that is sent to attack a pastor is not the same one that is sent to an usher. It's not what they send to any believer. They have different levels and power. So there are those that are not sent to fight. They are just sent to spy. So when it has gotten that information, it takes it to the underworld and it gives this information to its superior. These demons have superiors that supervise them. In other words, they are organized the way the world is organized. You have an army which has a spy network. It has a, you know intelligence department. It has, uh, it has uh, those ones who fight in the air, marine, on the land. Uh, those are different departments. So there are departments underground like that. This one has taken a report. So now they arrange who is the best in this department to go and attack. So that's what you are trying. You are telling us. Wow. wow so wow. when they go to the underworld and give a brief, and they give the information to those. You know, there are others that have been trained to kill, to destroy. So they give those the information and they say, this is so and so, and this is their weakness, and maybe it's with their children. So they tell them that, you know, go and look for this loophole and that's where you should pass. So they ask, what keeps their family alive? It's their job. So you need to pray for your job. You need to pray for your children. Everything, you need to pray for it. Because when these spirits are sent, they attack what empowers your family. So when they understand your weakness, that when we attack this person at his children, and, and if this is a Christian and we attack his children, he will just lose it. So if it is a pastor, what, what does the pastor love so much in ministry? So that when we destroy that, we have also destroyed him. So that's how they work. So they send those that come to destroy, to destroy your ministry. So some of them come and someone is saying, oh, next week I have a job. So these spirits are listening. So they send these to destroy uh, what the prospects that you have. The devil just wants to destroy. And so they fight against your life. They fight and distract you from progressing. So when you wake up, you see that what was going on smoothly, after a short time, children are falling sick. After a short time, the job that you're expecting is gone. You find your wife is sick and you find that you can't understand anything. So it's not that you are in a good life that the devil is not seeing you. But he just has a way in which he tries to find the means of breaking you. So as a Christian who is watching us, even you that sort of Christian, you need to accept Jesus Christ and pray for yourself and pray for everything that you do. Because the time that you spend not praying, the devil is watching you and preparing to destroy you. So you need to keep in prayer. time has really caught up with us. We are going to explain more things in the next session, but thank God you have finished this, uh, you have talked uh, about this. But as you are talking about this demons coming and spying on somebody, I think this is a, um, the method of Satan which is even in the Bible. When you go to Judges from 14, we are seeing the most powerful man in the, the God has ever created. He's called Samson. 
Samson was so powerful that if the devil came in the form of a lion, he would just tear it. If they waited for him outside the gate, he would simply carry that city gate on his shoulders and he would kill Philistines uh, without using even any weapon. Bare hands. The guy was powerful. So he caused frustration in the camp of the enemy. And the enemy put a spy. They hired a girl called Jezebel, uh, sorry, Delara, to go and find out, spy and find out where is the source of this man's power. So this woman begins asking Samuel, how can I, what can I do to bind you? And uh, Samson is not even aware that they are spying him. He begins talking, dodging and doing what. At the end of the day, this woman had to find out where the source of Samson's strength is. And that was the covenant with God. God had told him not to cut the hair. The day he cut off that hair, he revealed the secret. The woman cut the hair. And Samson was like any other man. There are things that make us strong. Let me tell you, our viewers, I'll be bringing you people who have been like Eddie, people who have been at higher levels. I've seen God use me to deliver many of them. But I cannot stand there and think I am so strong. No, that is, that I'll be lying myself. What makes me strong is the Lord that is in me. My covenant with Jesus, the moment I mess up that covenant... The moment I begin walking deliberately in sin, the source of power will be cut off. That's how it is with you. You cannot be strong unless if you are covenant with God, unless if you are walking with God. He who is in us is greater than all the devil that is in the world. I've seen guys who do terrible things, but God has delivered them. You think just a man like me. God can use anybody who is in covenant with him. We want to thank God for delivering Eddie and raising him. He's using him to bless you where you are. His testimony has blessed many. So uh, I want to end by inviting anybody who is watching us and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. You are deceiving yourself. Anybody who is not in Christ, you are nothing before the devil. Christ makes us stronger before the devil. I want to pray for you. I want you to accept Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior. Just say these words after me. Receive Jesus into your heart. Let him take over your life and control you. Turn you into a godly person. So I am going to say a word of prayer. Father, uh, say, Lord Jesus, I want you to repeat these words after me as you receive Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. For the testimony that I've had. Lord, I accept you now to, uh, to become my Lord and Savior. I invite you into my life. Come and take over my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Those I remember and those I don't remember. Forgive me and set me free. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Now, I just want to take a minute and pray for you people. We are speaking to people who are going through these things. You have been having demons that are using you in the night. You are having terrible things oppressing you. You are dreaming of these dreams. I want to pray for you. Those demonic poisons. Some of you are having cancer. You are having sicknesses. You don't understand where they came from. But some of them began in, a dream, in dreams. We have had such people. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, which is above every other name. I thank you for our audience. I thank you for your people. Lord, you know them where they are. Some are in their sitting room. Some are wherever they are. I speak to them right now. And they come against the powers of darkness that have been attacking them. The forces that have been attacking them in, uh, in, in dreams. I come against them in the name of Jesus. Satan, I come against you and command you to lose those people. Lose them in the name of Jesus. I arrest the spiritual husband. The spiritual spouses that are using people in dreams. I come against you and destroy you. I command you to lose God's people. Lose them right now in the name of Jesus. That demonic food they ate in their dreams. I come against it. I break its power. Satan, I command you to lose God's people. 
Loose them in the name of Jesus. I defeat the power of, the, uh, of that dream. I destroy that dream that you had in the night. I destroy it. I command every evil spirit that has been harassing you to leave you right now. Leave them. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Lady, people want to hear your voice. We have been interpreting you. They are used to your voice. They know you know English. So speak now in English and say bye to our audience. Yes, our audience, we thank you all for following us on our YouTube channel again. Yeah, we thank God that you've also enjoyed this session. We believe it has done something in your life. May God bless you all. We meet again next time. Amen. Somewhere out there is a bound soul that may never know real freedom or get to live out the life God intended until they discover what you've just seen. You can help us get the word to them and set them f on the journey to freedom. With your support, we are able to keep these messages on air and reach out to multitudes through crusades, seminars and conferences. Give any amount today through our mobile money back numbers or by bank deposit to our account.